All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. I hope everyone had a good day, not just in regards to the market. Um, hopefully, you guys can hear me well. Can you guys hear me well? Everything good? All right. Awesome. Good to see everyone. What's up, Q? What's up, Lasky? Dowdy? Good evening. Once again, I hope everyone had a good day, not just, uh, you know, aside from the market, but just in general, right? Um, no, I, I, I just got back home from uh, spending time uh, with my uh, fiance's family, so. Um, hello, hello, hello. Um, so, we had a great day uh, trading, and, uh, you know, I wanted to touch on, right, in the House of Stacks, Right, we got our. We're on a three-day green streak, one fifteen to sixty-four. Very nice, uh, as well as three uh, record days from Hot Hand Trades, Gonzo and EE. Congrats to you guys on your record day. Uh, what a way to end the week off, right? Very nice, very green. I also wanted to cover over some um, of the profits and percents that were posted today. Two hundred twenty-two percent, Mr. Harris. Very nice, Rich Paul ninety-one, LJ Gusto. Uh, our Blasquez, trying to get him on some uh, more options trades, but very very strong move. I don't, you know, he doesn't even necessarily need to move to options, but DWAC has been, uh, you know, tried and true for those uh, kind of um, you know common traders. Very nice, 10k on the day. Can't complain. Rich Paul, 229 dollars. What did uh, Queen get? Queen made uh, two and a half grand, just about right. Very nice. Good job, E. Great work, guys. Look at Ace. Or no, this is not Ace. This is Rich, uh, Rich Paul. $680 on the month so far for the first week. Killer, guys. Killer. Love to see it all, right? Everyone's doing very well. Uh, and for those of you who are struggling, who posted in profits percents, right? Uh, it's okay. It's definitely okay to be going through that. Um, I know it's hard to see others making money when you are sitting there struggling as a trader. It's gonna happen guys, right? Very nice West Man Tooth four grand this month uh, The last couple weeks right since he's been in the discord uh, Much love to all his zero DTE homies. That's right, right? Got a lot of flack about zero DTEs, but I don't know I it's weird cuz I was talking with Lunar and He was saying like I was like, yeah, that's that's pretty much all we trade and he was like that's that's insane <laughs> You know, I don't know uh, Max Bull Bear Pain very nice 8400 bucks on the day Right Good job, Dark Mike. Five hundred bucks, and Fan hitting making a six thirty four on the day. T Moru seven seventeen. Oh, he finished it off. Look at this guy. Insane. Ten racks. Right. Very good. Ace. Thirty four hundred so far this week. Nice way to start off the uh, the month, guys. Oh, look at Q. Q finally posted in here. Finally, look at this guy. Eighty percent and twenty five percent on his Q entries. Very good. So tonight's session, right, we're going to be covering over, uh, I have a few notes here. I'm just going to be going over like a chart review, trade review, as well as um, a few kind of uh, reasons as to why some traders may not be able to hold on to a trend. Okay, in hindsight, this looks like a very simple trend to be maintained. Look at the five minute, right? You could have in hindsight, yeah, hold the five minute all the way. I did this today, right? I held, uh, what was I trading? My 356 calls. Um, yep, 356 calls. The February 7th expiry because I didn't want to deal with too much theta decay as I was going to just manage the remainder of my position uh, as long as the EMA is held. Um, as well as just a few things talking about intraday zones. I want to talk, uh, talk about my uh, doji method that we trade uh, just about every day. Um, how to use larger time frame wicks, right? Reading what these upper or lower wicks mean on a larger time frame. Um, of course, five and ten minute EMAs, and then some breaking bases, right? One thing that I want you guys to uh, truly notice, or you know, kind of piece together with your trading, is that you know it, that you don't have to be finding or adding new things to your trading all of the time. Um, you guys have seen the last few months i have a very solid system and i like to maintain that system uh of simplicity right the the more simple my strategy is the better i can execute it and be much more fluid at that given time 
Um, also, before we get started, if you guys have any questions, right, please write them in chat now, as well as uh, take notes uh, if possible, okay? This is nothing crazy. This is nothing new. This is all very simple information that you can, uh, you know, cover over and over and over and learn this very simple kind of concept uh, in regards to how I trade, right? Um, as well as uh, knowing what to do or what to expect when uh, a pivot breaks, right? Uh, and, and I'm not talking about just a macro trend. I'm also talking about in the micro trend. Um, yo, not Paul Rudd, 217, uh, 217% over 12 days. Nice, brother, nice. Very good. Um, also, if the second stream goes out in the Discord, the Chart Hosher stream, please just let me know. Just tag me, and I will be able to refresh it. Um, I hear a lot of uh, beeping, so I don't know if it's gone out or not. Um, and let's go through it, right? I'm going to start off with my pre-market channels here. So we'll go into the Discord, Maple's Watchlist. This is uh, QQQ here, right? We had the pre-market plans this morning, posted at 844. Uh, and we have the situational contracts, right? Remember, I talked about this yesterday. And I wanted uh, you guys to understand that, hey, when I chart these situations here, um, one of them's going to happen, right? I know for a fact that one's going to happen because it can't just move sideways. Our charts have to move up and down and bounce or reflect off of things, right? Traders take trades based off of taking a level to use for risk. Um, so moving forward here, right, I have break and base above pre-market high. So this was the pre-market high here. Then, of course, I marked the uh, pre-market low right before open and then the previous day low, right? So these are the levels that we had previous day low. This didn't happen yet. Remember, I posted them at 844. The pre-market low ends up being, uh, you know, 350, 36, around 915. So this hadn't formed yet, but we have a very clear channel, right? Previous day high supply and previous day low demand. I'll port those onto the chart now. Previous day high supply right there. So you can see a very clear range, right? Rejecting, bouncing, rejecting, rejecting, bouncing, rejecting, right? Through the overview of the day. Let me even maximize this cell. Okay. <clears throat> right. Um, and we can see that, you know, I talked about on the plans, right? Breaking basing above pre-market high or rejecting pre-market high. Breaking basing below pre-market low or bouncing off pre-market low or the demand, right? So we can see that just off of this open, this right here, previous day low, held very strongly as support. These are levels that you can base risk off of, right? Also, in the macro trend here, let's go in the hourly, right? We, we know what higher highs and higher lows are, right? So higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. Higher high, when you get the first lower high, right? Right there, the first lower high, this doesn't push up. You want to see the support to hold. You want to maintain higher lows, right? Higher low fails. This is why the trend shifts from an uptrend to a downtrend, okay? Same thing here. Higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, lower highs, right? Now lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. What happens to the trend? We go into downtrend. So off the open here, or before the open, excuse me, um, I see this lower high, lower low, lower high, right before open and pre-market, right? We got a lower low. What does that mean, guys? Okay, if I get a lower low, that means that the target has been met. That the short who took this short up here, his target was to break underneath uh, or beneath the support. He got that. He got his scale out, right? His cover, right? Because you had to buy here. And so we were expecting some sense of a rebound, right? Because when this pivot low breaks, the target's been met. It's got to come back up to test for a lower high, right? Now, we were looking for a lower high. This moves much larger towards the end of the day. But that's just something to expect when you uh, kind of uh, overlook or not overlook, but overview the macro trend, right? Normally in the one hour for very uh, 
you know, recent price action data. Oh, second stream's down? Okay, thanks. Yeah, I hear the beeping. Okay, um, should be good. Yeah, yeah, if you guys can tag me, it helps because then it, it pops up a notification for me. Uh, so we see this, right? Right off before the open, it bounces. So what happens right off the open? Okay, or I mean, it, it cr uh, cracks a pivot break. It So then it bounces. So off the open, it shoves up. Um, another thing to take note of was this kind of inverse head and shoulders, right? So there was this level here. I'll mark uh, this. So right here, there's a left shoulder, pushes down. Here's the head. This right here pops up. When it pulls back, it bases this left shoulder neckline as support, and you get a next push up. Now remember, the short got a lower low. So remember, on the pivot breaks, we should be locking in profit, right? So what happens here? The longs get a pivot break, a higher high. You can see that very clearly, right? It's Let's say that you bought an entry here, right? Your goal is to break over the most recent pivot, this being in pre-market, you break above, what happens above it? Selling, okay? This is a liquidity kind of area, right? Where buyers and sellers are making a strong decision, okay? Um, Desert Wolf says, how do you know it's not forming a bull flag with the lower low and lower high? Um, I don't, what do you, uh, a bull flag with a lower low and lower high. So... I think, I think what you're saying right here, yep, lower low, lower high. I don't know if you're talking about right before this area right here. Maybe, I don't see one here. But we'll, we'll, we'll just continue through, right? So we see this head and shoulders, right? Left shoulder, head, right shoulder, big push up. But also, remember, this was a very small and quick price kind of jump, right? This comes back and bases this as a shoulder, right? Even though it comes below it a little bit, right? This is a wick on a larger time frame prior to the large move up. This is where I flip uh, from going short to long. Um, and I wanna cover over a few trades. So I went in the trading floor today, uh, right here. Okay, I need to put this on the one minute because this is where I snag the trade off of. Remember using the, the best time frame to your advantage. Is that, that's not the one, is it? It must be. Oh yeah, no, you're fine, Desert Wolf. Yeah, we'll I'll go over it again. So let's see. I don't think this is the right day. Oh it is. Okay. QQQ, right? So um right here, I take the uh where's it at? Where's it at? 355 calls, right? 355 calls right here at eleven twenty-four. They're at a dollar twenty-four, right? So we'll go to uh, 11.24. Hopefully you guys caught this on stream with me. I think this is, where are we at here? Oh, perfect, yep, right here in this dip. So we'll go to the 11.24 candle right on this red candle, right there. So you can see the timestamp today at 11.24 a.m., 3.55. Uh, calls at 124 on QQQ, aiming for VWAP, right? Now, typically when you're under VWAP, even depending upon the trend and everything, yes, we got a lower low. So what's going to happen? We're going to get a sense of popping up here. But why did I take calls on this? I had been taking puts in this area and going, uh, taking calls as well, kind of trading this uh, kind of doji. I think it was on the five minute, this doji method. Yep, right here. So let me clear this chart completely out. And I had this doji method marked right here. Right there. Okay. And once we got this candle closing beneath the body, right? You see this area that I've highlighted from the original doji. Um, I stopped out of my puts, right? Or I mean my, uh, my calls, right? Because it shoves through. I don't want to take this risk right there. So I stop out. It was a little small paper cut. But when I come back in, remember that 1124 candle, it's right here on that red kind of range. This is on a five minute, so it's a bit different, right? 84% rule, guys. My entry was in this area. I see that, hey, buyers 
I didn't take a loss down here. I uh, stopped out within this doji kind of channel. When it breaks below and it comes back near my entry, I feel like that's super bullish. Look at the, uh, I think I was looking at the, maybe the 15, maybe it was the 10. I think it was the 10. Yep, that's what it was. See the doji method here? I had a doji channel right drawn out. This is just bumped up to the 10 minute. No candle closed beneath the base of that support. That was a huge sign. I have to see a candle close above that level or below the support or resistance, right? In order for me to have a strong confirmation of that trade. Look what happens. Nothing closes under the 10 minute doji support. This first candle closes above the 10 minute doji resistance, meaning that the sellers are going to cover and what happens the rest of the day. This big move up. We'll go back in on the one minute here. Give me one second, guys. Okay. I'll go back to the one. All right. So just to show you again, right here, 355 calls at 124 at 1124 a.m. I'm Eastern Standard Time, of course. Uh, so we take that candle, 1124. You can see the time right there. They're at $1.24. Okay. Now, why would I take this? What I saw here was that previous demand that we had using and also using intraday zones, right? Would you not say that tight small body consolidation prior to a large move up would dictate this being a demand zone? So draw it. Look where they absorbed, right? Buyers were waiting for these traders to stop out those, those weaker longs to absorb their shares in this demand, which was a much better buy. And I recognized that looking at the 10 minute. And I was like, okay, well, you know, I had the right thesis. Maybe my execution was poor. 84% rule, right? Instantly. No hesitation, no regret if it goes against me, this or that. I, I've done it tons of times taking trades on an 84% rule. So remember, original entry here about this area. I stop out right before the dump here, comes back. I take entry again, and then we're able to ride this up. Now, remember, if I have a trade here, right, and it's at $1.24, where do I lock some in? Two more minutes, right? Two more minutes, where are we at? 1126 from 1124 why would i lock some in there why because we got a pivot break a higher high break so you have to lock it in now for me to see uh i'll go over 84 percent rule in just a minute right for me to see a true confirmation remember break and base what is this this is that resistance from the five minute doji break up base what happens guys the rest of the day look at that break base continuation to the upside okay now when i see this base i don't want to take my 355 calls again because they're at a dollar 24 from the original average now when they're popped up there they're at like a dollar 80 or something like that just two minutes later um on the next move up right scaled most at 1.8 right there vwap break and base VWAP, purple line, break up, base upon. See the bottoming wicks here? Bar is absorbing under VWAP, okay? VWAP break and base. Walking through this trade, also talking it out through on the live stream, okay? Then I take the 356 calls at 1.3. That's laddering right there, 1131. You can see that time, 11, look. February 4th, 2022, 1131 a.m. Nothing's edited, everything is live and untouched, okay? So right here. We take entry, uh, one second, 1131. Where's 1131, guys? Right here, that candle, the base of that wick. I want to use this previous resistance as support. Why does that work, right? Previous resistance turning support is because those sellers that were sitting right here are going to turn into buyers when they cover out. So when they have the chance to stop out break even or cover break even, they're going to take that chance. Um, someone's asking about 84% rule. I'm going to be making a video on that uh, and posting it tomorrow. But, you know, just going over, remember, I said I took an entry here. I stopped out here. Normally, most people would have stopped out there because the support level broke, right? You stop out there, noticing the five minute candle on the doji method, um, breaks through, right? comes back to your entry on momentum, you take it again. That's the that's the 84% rule. You take that entry again to negate your loss 
and continue on your thesis that was originally correct, but maybe your execution was poor, right? So, I mean, traders all in the group have been using this every single day, right? Day in, day out. So, um, right, I don't want to mess up. I want to also want to talk about laddering, okay? Notice my entry here, 355 calls at 124. I didn't want to mess up my average because the 355s were hitting at 1.8. On the VWAP breaking baits, I see another entry. I don't want to mess up my average, so what do I do? I take the next strike up, 355 to 356. What price do I take them at? The same price practically as the 355s, right? That is how you don't mess, that is how you prevent messing your average up, as well as capitalizing on the same trade, making more money. I knew that, hey, if I hold these 355s, and just hold and hold and hold, right? I'm actually not capitalizing as much as I could because there's another entry. This is where someone would have averaged up, right? Added more to their position, but you're gonna collect delta, okay? When you take the next strike up, holding your original entry, making money on two different strikes, okay? So um, that was one of those trades. Also, I took... Uh, at the end, right here, 356, right here at 1204. You can see February 4th, 2022, 12.04 p.m. Nothing edited, nothing changed. 356 calls, QQQ, February 7th at $3.38. Why did I take the next expiry? Look at the time, okay? 12 o'clock. Normally on Fridays or on any zero DTE days, um, I do not like the the rapid theta decay after 12 o'clock, right? I'm normally done after 12 uh, o'clock, right? I'm normally done one or two o'clock normally. So what did I do? I switched to the February 7th, right? February 7th, they're a bit more expensive, but you know, l a lot less theta, right? You're not going to have as much decay. So I take them. Remember, this is like laddering. I take a different strike, you know, I've scaled and hold very small cores on the rest. I took the February 7th, 338 at 12.04 p.m., right? Where's 12.04 p.m.? 12.04. Right there. Do you see where my entries are, guys? Right, can you take us a, a minute and look at my entries, right? On these three winning trades. They're on a pullback. Little red candle, pullback. This view out breaking base pullback. See this entry right here, 1204? It's on a pullback. Why would I take those? Right? Because there's the the premiums are not as juiced up, right? They're not as spiked up. You're buying something at a discount, taking on much less risk. When you change your this, okay, everyone's like, hey, what's the turning point in your trading? I've got a million of them, right? Because I was pivoting back and forth from trading awful to trading great to trading awful to trading great, right? So you, you should have a million of them. One of my turning points in trading was when I stopped buying long up here and I started waiting for dips, right? That's when I, that's when it, it one of the biggest pivots in my trading. I was like, oh, wow. You know, it's not scary doing that. That's actually much less risk, right? So look at my entries, right? Dip, 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 right? So we take the 356 calls on the February 7th expiry, right? I said I need five minute, nine EMA to hold, right? So this is on the one minute. See that entry right here, 1204? Let's go on the five. Do you see what that entry is, guys? Can anyone tell me why, why I took entry here? On the 356 February 7th. I'll wait. Buyer, okay, a nine. Perfect. Buyer stepping in under 5 minute 9 EMA. Shoption uh, says uh, 20 EMA hold, right? Strong candle EMA tap from Xeros. Risk is 20 EMA, right? Perfect. 9 EMA tap. EMA, yep. Okay. So you guys get that, right? I've showed you. In all of the live streams this week that um, we have used the 5-minute EMA uh, or the 5-minute 9 and 20 EMAs and the 10-minute to gather and uh, take much simple uh, or much more simple entries, right? We're not sitting there scalping on the 1-minute, getting tossed around in the 1, going up and down, up and down, right? You know, we go long here. 356 calls February 7th because it is a 9 EMA tap. I see a ton of bottoming wicks here that's just showing some buying pressure. Yes, there are a lot of upper wicks here, right? 
but take into context of what your indicators are doing. Can someone tell me, right, what or why I was leaning bullish, even though there was a short, I was scalping the short up here in this range, right? But, you know, looking at the indicators, where are we? Where is price action in relevance to the indicators? Okay, Ninjanar, above VWA, right? EMA's cross, source cell, right? EMA cross, Rebel of God says. Above VWAP, dopey, right? Above, uh, nine is above 12. Okay, perfect, right? We are understanding what the EMAs and indicators and, and everything are trying to tell us. Where are Where is price action in regards to VWAP? And what are my EMAs doing, right? Are they being respected by price action? So we can see it, right? We take this. And then uh, throughout the trade, right? I'm pretty much done trading. I'm going to hold this, right? 345 taking 84% rule right, 345, 3.7, okay, scaled more out near 4, 4.6, got my $5 scale, and then uh, got the 6 scale, right, so from $3.45 a contract to over $6, okay, why was I able to hold on to this trend, you know, if you look at this chart, you know, and especially with me trading mobile after logging off at like 1 o'clock because I want to enjoy the rest of my day, right don't be don't be a prisoner to the desk right yeah that's not what you began trading to escape that don't don't create that whole problem all over again so look at the five minute five minute emas solid right they're banging there's no reason for me to stop out the 20s never close beneath and if it is very small you know it's bought right back up i never just look at one time frame look at the 10 10 minute 9 ema never really faulted on, right? Yeah, you get a pullback. It also, what's this pullback maintain, right? EMAs are not everything. Look at your pivot points. This was your most recent higher low. That's the lowest point on the pullback. This has never broken through. The trend is going to continue, right? So, you know, that's kind of how I hold on to trades, right? Uh, I know a lot of traders, they, they get into, you know, they just let their mind... Uh, overtake themselves uh, and their kind of logistical or you know proper analysis when taking a trade or when holding on to a trade um you know so one second um i also wanted to cover over some doji methods right i think uh the 10 minute where did i see them at earlier yep right here look at this so i want to mark this remember big spike up or big shove down right shove down doji spike up doji right let's mark the original doji the og doji okay remember you mark the original one the high and the low then you mark a you know a shaded zone on the box this box this is just a line in the sand this is the tug of war okay remember you want to go long on the down tick and you would be shorting up here right because your risk is this support for the long and your risk for the short is up here the resistance okay um yeah original means the first doji yep this first one you see now i have a video on youtube going over this uh if you're unfamiliar with it all right let me pull it up for a second just to show you which one on the channel uh right here right maple stacks doji bar strap Okay, this is a very good uh, video to get used to or to understand uh, how to be profitable with the 920 EMAs. Uh, there's a ton of videos in here that are very uh, helpful in order to, uh, you know, for you to understand some of the concepts uh, of my trading. So um, we see here, right, I am looking for the first candle to close into the upper wick or below into the bottoming wick here. Now that doesn't signify what the trend is actually going to do. But it does show strength or weakness depending on, uh, upon which direction you're trading, right? Uh, strength or weakness to the buyers or the sellers. So what it means through price action, I can see that, hey, this buyer has pushed up and shoved uh, the short ask up, right? It closed into their upper wick, right? The ask, their ask was set right there, that 355.85. Once we close the candle above, right? They start to struggle. They start to cover a little bit. We get a stronger candle closing into the upper wick. Now, the trend's not done. Remember, 
price will shove down look it shoves down three times under this support level so you know there was a sense of you know some sense of uh weakness there on that doji support but so what i'm aiming for is a candle closing above the support or the above the resistance excuse me or below the support right so once we get a candle closing into this upper wick it shows weakness for the shorts they're going to begin to stop out why does this move happen right this move doesn't happen because there's a huge influx of buyers there's a in there's a huge influx of sellers beginning to cover they see that hey this is gaining momentum this is breaking and basing above vwap the emas are leaning bullish okay these shorts that we're holding now not all shorts are going to be right here you have a lot of shorts in this area right on that red bar so when they get nervous and they want to cover preemptively just like i i, I uh covered or you know stopped out preemptively down here before the support right they're going to begin to cover the sign is all the signs are all right there in front of you when the candle closes above this doji kind of body and then it closes above the resistance look at the reaction the rest of the day i mean this is what 12 40 all the way up to three o'clock so two hours and 20 minutes right of just riding a trend because you took a an analysis of a doji method here right this is the chart is always going to tell you exactly what it's going to do uh when it's going to do it and how it's going to do it yep short exactly 1983 brings up a good point uh buyers are just sellers waiting to sell and sellers are buyers waiting to buy right because sellers have to cover or sellers have to buy in order to cover um Larger time frame wicks, right? I kind of touched on this earlier. This is a 10 minute. The 10 minute is great. It's going to uh, provide you a lot of information um, near pivot points, right? Near uh, big pushes down. It's going to tell you, you know, and give you the gauge of how strong a move is or how weak a move is. So, you know, you're getting push up, large upper wick, push up, large upper wick. There's obviously short kind of a, there's a short perspective or short sentiment right here large upper wick now you have two large upper wicks tweezer top no candle closing above that right you can see this very early on and look at the move to the downside now remember later entries dictate quicker profit taking because the traders who took on more risk or you know the uncertainty up here they're being rewarded for that you catching on to a trade midway through or halfway through the dump right you're just you know trailing on their coattails trying to get a piece of the move okay so don't feel like you have the luxury of holding as long from these buy or you know those sellers up here or you know people buying puts nice hmd pro um and look on the reversal right large bottoming wicks tweezer bottom just like this tweezer top up here okay reversal this is different when you have a large uh, a large amount of upper wicks and a large amount of lower wicks it means buyers and sellers are at a balance right so that's why the doji method helps me out someone uh yesterday was asking me about um you know how i overcome my weaknesses and i was talking about you know some of my weaknesses were you know getting in earlier on reversals and trading the chop a lot of traders would call this chop right but we know exactly how to trade this i have a ton of you know information of how how to trade this in the discord but you know that doji method helps out a ton um i also want to go through someone has uh i get a lot of questions asked about um oh yeah i need to add youtube oh oh you already added it thanks bro i didn't know you could do that um i need to uh i want to cover over you know contract selection okay so it's it's one of the biggest obstacles when moving from small caps to large caps it's a totally different aspect of trading right i'm still trading the same thing i'm trading regular price action on the underlying chart uh yes you have to deal with you know some of the greeks oh excuse me you have to deal with some of the greeks as well as uh picking a strike price okay now i know uh some of you guys one second um I just want to make sure that the second stream's good. Uh, Sebastian says, is there a certain time frame that the doji method works best? I like the five and the ten minute. Oh yeah, no, I said the same thing. 
Um, so going through, right, selecting contracts. Sorry, I had a yawn. Selecting contracts here. Um, let me just clear this chart completely out. Okay, let's just say that you're looking at the 10 minute intraday zone, large bottoming wick prior to a large move up. That's a zone, right? Now, when this comes down here, so let's say that you're looking to take an, an entry on an options contract here. Look at the price, right? It's at 352. Okay, so that you know that for us to push up, there's, I'm going to mark 353, usually going to be the strike prices, 353, 350, this has no correlation to what I'm just writing, just marking out price levels uh, for the strikes when they were to push in the money, if you're looking at calls, right? 355, come on. There we go, and then 356. Okay, so those are your strike prices, right? If you're looking to buy something in this demand, okay, look, 355, 356, 357, yada, 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 right? You can see that this is very, uh, you know, simple, right? Remember, the black ones are out the money contracts, prices that are not currently in the money, the purple are uh, are in the money contracts. Now, a common misconception, I don't know, you know, depending upon how some of you guys trade or, you know, your experience in trading, right? Um, when you take an entry, let's say you're, you're down here and you take a 354, that doesn't mean, you know, selecting which strike does not mean your target. You're not saying, oh, I want price to go up to 354, right? I, you know, your target is not to get the contract in the money all of the time. Okay, and I also want to talk about which contracts to select. So let's say, you know, you're down here, 352, the base of this demand right here. We'll mark 352 right here. Okay, 352, the very bottom, right? Pretty strong whole number support. So, um... Price at 352, you go to the trade. I like trading, now this is not gonna show itself because the, the price isn't there, right? But if, if price is at 352 and you're looking to go long on calls, right? You're looking for price to go up because of this demand, how are you gonna trade this? So you go through 352, this is what the current price is at, right? You would be trade, what I typically trade are the first one to three out of the money. So, you know, if price is at 352 and it has not pushed past 353 yet, then the 353s would be out of the money. So with the 354s and the 355s. Okay, so that's what I would be looking to trade. I'd be looking to trade the first three, 353, 354, and 355. Now also, uh, a thing that I, you know, need to be watching out for uh, is the theta and the delta, right? Now, normally after 12 o'clock, we see, especially in zero DTEs, you see a lot of theta decay, right? You have to be very quick with taking profit. Uh, I probably need to go to the further expert for this, but normally, like right here, this is a prime example. Further out of the money contracts, they are cheap, right? They're cheap for a reason because there's lower probability, okay? So also, let's say that, you know, for you to get your contract in the money from 365 all the way from 358, Right, that's seven dollars a contract. Right, look into if if you're whatever you're trading the index, whatever you know holding. If it even has that range, right? How far has it moved up? Is that a realistic kind of movement? Because a lot of times, you know, traders will buy things that are cheaper because they don't want to take on as much risk, or you know, their account size or something like that. Right, but look at the delta. Okay, I typically like, remember, take notes, I typically like anything above 0.3, right? Ideally, I like above 0.4. Okay, so we can see here, where's the 0.3 contract at? Right here, 350 or 361, right? That's one, two, three contracts out of the money. Okay, 3.5, see, this is above 0.35 and above 0.43. These are going to pay you very well. And they're going to follow the underlying, um, you know, very closely. When you buy things that have 0.19 or 0.14, you know, under 0.2, especially, these contracts, 
take a huge move in order to to make a good trade right also remember look at the expiration do we have all these weeklies these are very far at weeklies you know since these are zero dtes are very close to the expiration right you're going to deal with a lot more theta decay right and large theta and small delta is a bad combination right um so and and when i say large data, i mean like negative you know theta like theta that would affect you negatively because it's closer to that contract expiring so you know going through right when we talk about trading this chart Okay, it's at 352. I would either trade the 353 or the 354 uh, calls, those being out of the money because price has not reached there yet. Remember when I took this trade right here, what did I take? I took the 355s and the 356s, right? Those were obtainable. There was still a high of day and you make money along the way to that contract going in the money, right? So... Remember, good rule of thumb, do not buy super deep out of the money, right? You want to trade max, typically max, one to three. Sometimes I go four or five, depending upon, you know, if I'm, how hard I'm laddering or my confidence in a trade, but normally the first one to three. The same goes for the puts, right? I mean, look at the delta, right? 0.34. This is four contracts out. I typically like the first three, right? 0 0.39, 0 0.44, and 0 0.5. Those are strong deltas that are for out of the money contracts. Um, and, uh, you know, remember, you don't have to hit that. Your, your um, calls or your options premium does not have to hit that price uh, in order for you to be making money. You know, that's, it's not like a price target where you begin to start making money, right? You can sell, like if you take the 355 calls and you sell them right here well before 355 or right you know right beneath 355 you're still going to make a huge move depending upon if you're trading the zero dte um so we went over the trade review some breaking bases i went over that um also breaking bases work on you know not only like price action levels or vwap you know but also on your indicators right you get a 90 MA break, right? It breaks the 90 MA here on the 10 minute. And now I know, remember, you don't want to FOMO. You, you know, why Why are these bad entries here, right? In your review, talk about, you know, why this, why this should be an avoidable entry. The reason why I got this entry here was because I was waiting for price to come back down to the 90 EMA because of the space here, right? You see this big space from the EMA? That means do not buy. That means sell your position if you're already in it you, or scale some out. You know that it's going to come back. It's a given fact. It is a proven fact that price will come back and touch that EMA. It will always touch that EMA at some point in time. Um, okay. Going through... So uh, also another problem, I think I had someone come on stream earlier, you know, talking about... I mean, um, you know, they were bag holding, right? And if you're in the stream, right, don't be ashamed. Yep, there's his entry right there. He told me this is where his entry was, probably going here on the five. And he asked, you know, hey, should I sell? I mean, you know, is there a chance that SPY comes back and round trips to the high of the day, right? Yes, there is that possibility. But why did you hold your, your contract to negative 99%? You know, especially if you're trading zero DTE, right? If you're trading zero DTE and this comes back to your price, right, where you entered, your, your contract is still going to be very red, right? Because why? Where you entered this, theta has eaten your contract. Time has elapsed. So when it does come back to your entry, you're probably not even green, right? I think what did, I don't even know what he would have t taken here, like 440... Let's just say like 449s calls. Yep, here we go. So right here, if he took the entry at 1020, 1020 here. Okay. Now right here is 1145. Look at 11.45. It is back at his entry. Right? You guys see this. 10.25, 11.55.
10 25 11 45 11 55 do you see where his entry was three dollars and five cents you're still down a dollar right about 70 cents or so right that is theta on the zero dte so don't think that you know trading the underlying it's not as simple as that you we are dealing with greeks okay you're dealing with theta delta gamma you know all the other ones yada yada right so don't think that hey Oh, all I needed is to for the QQQ or Spire or whatever to come back to my entry, right? No. For for him to hold, I mean, for him to, to come back to break even, it doesn't come back to break even, right? Let's draw a horizontal line. It doesn't come back to break even, $3.08 until uh, 1 o'clock, right? Where is 1 o'clock at? Way up here, way from your entry, right? So there needs to be a point in time where we take accountability and responsibility like, hey, that was a bad trade, right? Also looking at his entry here, right? Why would you take entry off of an extension from the five minute EMA, right? You know that it's going to come back down. And when it does come back down, that doesn't mean instantly take an entry. You want to gauge the price action, right? What happens? Oh, Let's say you he never took the entry. Oh, this isn't being respected. That's a bearish kind of sentiment, breaking especially below the 20 EMA on the 5, right? What do we get? We get a breakdown. It pushes up, so a base on VWAP. You break VWAP, you base on it, you get a continuation for a move down, right? So pace yourself with your entries, guys. Take accountability. Hey, you know, how many times have you guys taken an entry and been like, damn, that was it. This is a bad trade, right? I feel it, right? You you feel it, and you're like, oh, you know, I shouldn't have done that. You know, I'm in this trade now. I, I've put money. I have skin in the game. You know, there's nothing I can do. There is something you can do. You can take responsibility and accountability and say, hey, I fucked up. I traded based off of euphoria. I don't want to be in this trade anymore. Okay. Uh, yeah, Japexkin says, uh, so pretty much zero DTE take profits quicker or take paper cuts. Yep. I mean, you know, I, I trade them every day. I trade the nearest X3 one, D one DTEs all the time, right? I don't have a huge problem with it. I can understand for a newer trader, you know, but, um, it, it it's for anything. I mean, if, if, if this wasn't zero DTE, if this was like a week out, that's an awful entry. Would you not say that, right? So it doesn't matter if you're trading 0 DTE, 3 DTE, right? 7 DTE, anything like that, right? What matters is your understanding of the chart and what is a good and what is a bad entry. Um, and you just said when you have a bad entry, that's when you can't stay in a trade because you know your spot is risky, so you scale quick as hell. Yep, exactly. Like you have to know, you know, hey, what was this guy doing, right? Breakout buying. You guys know my stance on breakout buying. It's lazy. Stop being a breakout buyer. It doesn't fucking work. I mean, like, sometimes it, it may work out for you, like, but most of the time not. You know, most of the time you're going to get dumped on. You know, oh, oh, I'm going to buy this preemptively for the breakout. Oh, my God, what do I do? What do I do? Do I hold on? Then it comes back. Yeah, he stops at break even. Sure, he could have held on the rest of the day, but, you know, my thing is, is that if it gives you the opportunity to get break even or even a small paper cut, the market very seldomly gives you an opportunity to, uh, you know, like a second chance, right? Uh, a forgiveness, get out of jail free card, right? It rarely ever gives that to you. And when it does present itself, right? Like why does a break in base work? Because it gives that opportunity to that buyer or seller to stop out as close to break even as they can. So, um, and we also, right, so let's say he took that entry and he held it the rest of the day. What, what kind of experience is built there? Okay, really think about that. If his experience is that, hey, I can hold on to that trade and, and hold on for the rest of the day, even though I have an awful entry, then I can do it again, right? He's like, oh, I just need to hold, hold the rest. Of the I can do it again, right? That is that is a very bad habit to be forming okay this was an awful entry this was a prime entry for a short where was the good entry at for the long down here in the pre-market low demand right for spy so 
you know, focus yourself, focus your energy on good entries rather than bag holding and being like, oh, I would, you know, this is what, what gets on my nerves. It's like, and, and you know, if, if he's watching, right, I'm not saying you this or that, right, but this, you know, I see traders all the time. Oh, I bag held negative 90, 80%, but then I was up 20%, 30% on the day, right? I know what I'm doing, right? I plan on doing that. That was a good trade. No, it wasn't. You got lucky. Okay, and that's what the market makers want to happen. They want you to feel lucky. They want you to feel like you can make bad mistakes in the market and then they're going to punish you, right? Um, FX Oasis says, uh, how do I tell if a 9 EMA tap is it a, or if it's a reversal that will blow through past the 9 EMA? You wait. You wait for that reaction, right? Where did I take entry here? I took entry in the first five minute candle, right? But you could have waited. Oh, they're absorbing here. They're absorbing here. You want to see that price action bottoming wick on this five minute candle when it shoves through. You're not seeing any stopping. That's why you don't have blind bids. I would rather be a little late to taking my entry, seeing other traders do the hard work. So like, let's say that you don't get filled on the bottoming wick, but you get filled a little bit higher. I'd rather have that than to, you know, preemptively take it or have a bid set right randomly or just blindly. Uh, and then get dumped on, right? So, um, yeah, Q, better leave money on the table than form bad habits that will burn later. Yep, exactly. I mean, every experience in the market is going to present itself again. So if it's going to present itself again, if you form a bad habit, that bad habit is going to present itself again, right? You're going to do the same bad habit over and over and over. Um, Sen says, how long does the 84% rule work? Yeah, he should have stopped out, but if he had did and re-entered there because the 84% rule, it, um, so no, Sen, I would not, this is not the 84% rule. The 84% rule is near a reversal point. So like him, this is an awful entry, you know, now this, like, you know, let's say you take a, you know, you go long here, right? You get stopped out there and then you buy it again, right? This is a point of reversal right so let's say like a like a short right if he shorted here got stopped out here and then reshorted his entry there but you know this oh i got here i got stopped out price is coming back to my entry that doesn't mean take it again right because this could have been a weak breakout this is what i'm talking about what i need to see for a breakout when you see this big bar over this support or resistance level that is a clean break this you see this breakout shit you see this breakout this is a weak breakout strong breakout weak breakout right no big upper green bar only upper wicks uh fat says how often do i stream this is insanely informative i stream every day um they can't get rid of me honestly i stream every single day uh live day trading 46 hours and then i i've done a live session every night this week and I, I do one pretty almost every night i might not do one for like one day or maybe two days uh but like every day um but i don't do this on twitch i only do this for the first of the month uh and i do uh, all of this in my discord right uh you can ask anyone in the chat if they are from the house of stacks uh our kind of process throughout the day and throughout the week um, I spent a ton of time focusing on the discord, uh, as well as, I mean, you know, this is, uh, you know, our Google drive file right here from all of the previous live sessions, like we're having right now of all of the different strategies, everything that will help you become a profitable and independent trader, right? Huge video library. All of these videos are about an hour long, um, and very informative, Tons of breakdowns of all of my strategies and tools that I use day by day. Um, let's see. Yep, yeah, thanks. There's the 84%. Thanks, Q Jackson. Appreciate that, brother. Um, JR wins again says, Hey, Maple, can you go over what you mean by heavy? You say this a lot, and I don't have a firm grasp of what it means. So, um, heavy, right? So, you get something around the house. It's heavy. It's hard to pick up. You know, so like this is pushing up here, but it's showing a sense of weakness. It looks heavy. That means it's going to fall down, right? If I am holding something very high up and I drop it and it's heavy, it's going to fall very hard, 
right? Uh, I also will say things like this, like, you know, normally, you know, bullish strength, you know, you have a nice rally, but when we start to see, you know, upper wicks, upper wicks, upper wicks, all of that, that begins to look heavy. Normally, you know, I should say that, that looks a bit weak because heavy may imply, I mean, even weak would imply a sense of bias, right? But it does show price action. Normally, you know, I should have taken into account a little bit earlier when I was talking about it, we were extended off of the EMA. So this was going to come back and touch the nine. And I, you know, had pieced that together. And that's why we take those 356 calls, uh, the February 7th expiry. Yeah. Oh, dude, I love Jared from Live Traders. Dude's crazy. Um, what are you talking about, Q? So, let me go over. I think I have a few. Um, buying high, selling higher. Perfect. Okay, let me clear this out. Now, you know, let's say that you had this demand formed out and you missed it. You missed your entry. Traders have a hard time taking another trade after they miss their entry. What they end up doing is watching price action go worth uh and all of the money that they could have been making or what they do they buy a fomo candle like this right or like this the big green fomo candles or like this right and then they get dumped on and then they take a loss and then they're sitting there you know with stomach ulcers like really upset that you know they they couldn't uh, get a winning trade out even though their thesis was right they're like what the hell man like i thought this was gonna go up and it went up right so buying high and selling higher it's a hard concept to truly understand if you are a newer trader right but there's plenty of opportunities i'm here on the five minute i'm going to mark out all the entries on the nine right uh there's the break and base on the 20 ema there's your nine ema taps here two more one right there one right here a few here one right here and here right and then uh, this is where you start to get weakness, right? Why is it weak right here? Before I continue on, why is this? If we've gotten all of these pushes up, why is this weak, right? Lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. That's the reaction, right? These sellers begin to dump, okay? So buying high, selling higher. Now I've showed you where all of the entries were if you missed your original entry in demand. So what do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 entries just, just off the 5 minute 90 EMA. That's the only thing. Not talking about pivot points, not talking about breaking bases, not talking about 200 EMA A breaks, anything like that, right? Just off the 5 minute 9. You can trade solely off the 5 minute 90 EMA. Someone was also asking about the EMA crosses. I do add a lot of weight to those. They, they do uh, excite me, but they don't always pan out, right? Uh, to plan, right? So even though a five minute nine EMA, it does come back. What you wanna see is the nine EMA being respected, this general area. But once you got this candle closing above the 20, what happens to the trend? It totally shifts from bearish, right here, this candle right there. See it closing above the 20 from bearish to a very strong bullish, right? Um, you know, so going through buying high, selling higher, why and how can you do this intraday, right? How can you find yourself uh, in a trade where you can buy high and sell higher? So after you miss your trade, especially, or if you're laddering, remember I took an entry here, took an entry here, and took another entry there, right? Buying high and selling higher, buying high and selling higher higher okay so how do you do that okay you know that if you miss your entry that through probability and just through facts that someone else missed their entry right and it may not even be another retail trader it may be a, a market maker right a market maker may have missed their entry someone may have missed their order being filled something like that so if that is the case you know that that throughout a chart on any trend i can go on any day there's going to be lower high pops up or higher low kind of uh, pullbacks in order for you to get into a trade, right? Where those late buyers or late sellers jump into a trade. So just like I talked about, you do not want to buy these big green candles. You might, you might think of that as strength, 
Okay, your brain might think like, hey, big green candles over VWAP, money, right? That that's that's where your mind goes, money. Oh, money. People are making money. I need to jump in right now and make money, right? No. Don't. Stop doing that, okay? Stop being obsessed with in with money, right? Uh, be obsessed with taking good trades. So you know that, okay? I've talked about it all week. This extension, this space between the between price action and your 9 EMA. That's deadly. Okay, remember I told you the 90 EMA is not going to tell you when to sell, but the extension off of it will tell you when to sell, right? Why does this start to begin to have a lot of upper wicks here? Because of how extended we are from the EMA. So now, now we know, hey, don't buy that. Wait for it to touch. You want to watch the reaction, okay? When you see a lot of bottoming wicks here on the 9, it shows a lot of bullish strength and a lot of bullish interest on that 9 EMA. There's your entry, right? Pushes up again. Oh, hey, it's going to touch the 9 EMA. Another entry. Okay. Pushes up. Remember, look at the extension. Okay. This, if you FOMO'd into that candle, that's a poor entry. Yes, it may work out for you. Dial it in, guys. Okay. Dial it in. Okay. Right here, EMA tap, EMA tap. It gives you something to base risk off of. When this pulls back here, 20 EMA never closes below. Remember, you have to see a strong close below. This is a weak close below. Um, entry, right? Pops up, extends off the EMA, pulls back, touches it. Two more entries, okay? Look for your pullbacks and always look for the um, health of that trend or that EMA, whatever you're taking it on. Uh, RMH says around 215 would uh, would you not see that as a rounding top after taking out previous high of day after it closed under the 20 uh, so you said 215 so right here so remember don't only trade off one time frame guys so you're saying that uh, you possibly would have stopped out or maybe flipped to a bearish sentiment here okay I'm going to tell you why that, that that's not uh, the case this is what we're talking about right here, guys. We'll mark it red. Remember, so you said, uh, you said it right here. Um, after it closed under the twenty. Remember, we are not only EMA traders. Okay. Look at this. Pops up support. That's the most recent support. That's your most recent higher low. Would that have stopped you out? Right. Where? Why would it have stopped you out? If you bought way up here. Oh, how did that happen? Right? If you bought way up here, right? You fumbled into these big green candles. And I'm not saying you did, but I'm just saying a, tra a, a trader, right? Anyone. You know, look at your pivots. Okay? Also, don't be stuck on one time frame. Look at the health of your 5 and 10. So I'm already on the 5. Always look at your 10 minute. Okay? So I marked that arrow as red under the 20. Remember where that 5 minute trader may have stopped out if they had paper hands? That's an entry for the 10-minute trader. Right? We see that? We'll go back to the 5. The 5-minute five trader stops out. That is, you know, if you're only using one time frame for your EMAs, you're a weaker trader. You're already inhibiting yourself. 10-minute, that's the entry. It's the difference between worlds, guys. Are you stopping out and giving your contracts to someone else for them to make money? Look at all of the perspectives. There's two perspectives. You have 200 EMA break and base. You have support being held. And the 10 minute 9 EMA being absorbed. Um, that tweezer bottom below the 20 was also lower low. Why won't someone get out? Um, this is not, remember, if, if it is technically a lower low, right? Just like this. Technically a lower low, but no strong candle closing like so, right? This is what would have showed weakness. That's what would have showed that would have that would have gotten everyone out. That would have shown a ton of fear. But that's what happened. The candle closes like that. Okay? What happens here? Big shove down, kind of an overreaction. No one should have been buying right here, right? The, on the 10 minute. Do you guys see how big this extension is off this, right? This is kind of strange to draw. Okay, you see this. I can't draw it. You see this space in between the, the 9 EMA and price action. 
all it was doing was remember what's the fact it's going to come back and touch that 90 ma at some point in time so if i know that fact there's no reason for me to uh fomo into a trade you know feeling like i need to get into the trade uh, Hannah says all of those candles were so narrow bodied and had lots of upper wicks I like the lower wicks strong rejection, but the upper wicks had small bodies made me think of Momo interest was slowing down Help me understand on what time frame Hannah maybe uh, Maybe the one Second stream down gotcha Okay, this, remember, one minute EMAs, right? Yeah, one minute EMAs right there, not really doing too much. You know, don't get stuck on your one. Look at the five. Okay, even the five here. You know, yes, we are holding the five, right? But use both the five and the 10. The 20, you know, a lot of people think like, you know, you can only take the nine. The 20 is a much stronger entry most of the time, right? This touch is very, very, very close to the 20. Right, very, very close to 20. Those are stronger dip ads. These are kind of your more aggressive ads. The 9 is more aggressive, right? The 20 is very key. Okay. Um. Yeah, bro, more. So you say you got a question about the doji strat from today on QQQ when you get a minute? Yeah, Um. I will take, uh, well, I'll just answer this question then we'll wrap it up here. Right, but before I wrap it up, um, Guys, I will be having some Twitch EDU streams just like this one this weekend. I also will be uh, uploading some YouTube videos to help you guys kind of prepare yourself for the next week and just in general, right? Sharpen those tools. Um, you know, we've had a great uh, month so far or a great week so far in the House of Stacks. Uh, we're currently on a three-day green streak. Last month, we only had two red days uh, out of the entire month. It was the first day of the month and the end of the month, uh, oddly enough, but... We're doing uh, very good, and uh, I'm glad to see everyone's progress uh, along the way. So, you know, keep up the good work, guys. Continue to be patient, and your hard work will pay off through your process. Uh, Burmar says, I know it's safer to buy calls at the bottom and puts at the top of the wicks of the original doji, but if we see the first candle close into a top wick, like in this example, is it safer to buy calls then? With risk maybe being a candle below? Uh, yes. So... That's exactly what I did on the cues. All right, I think uh where yeah. Maybe I don't know. Right here. Okay. So, well, I mean, not pretty, uh, but I saw a huge amount of buying pressure here pushing up. I think what you're saying is like uh, this, I think on this kind of doji method, maybe it was on the 10. Yeah. Okay. Yep. This one. So yeah, this will be the last question and then uh, we'll wrap it up. Doji there, support resistance, right? You mark your body of the doji. I think what you're talking about is that when you start to see uh, candles closing into the upper wick, right? Would you take calls? Yes, you can take calls if you did not get your fill, your bid fill down here, right? Yes, you can take calls, but remember, you're taking on more risk. These traders down here have less risk, right? Because where's their stop out? Their stop out's right there, okay? One second. That's their stop out. Now, if you take this, where's your stop out, right? Maybe the preceding, you know, kind of smaller time frame candle or something like that. But yes, it is okay to take calls there. But just know if you're taking calls there, maybe you need to take lighter size um, or just be very, um, you know, precise of your stop loss and your risk. Um, uh, I am 24. Yep. And I've been trading about three years, just about. Uh, yes, on the 9 EMA, I will scale into the position that way. Uh, it'll be like a feeler ad. Uh, also give an example of a trade going against you and what your process is to stop out. So normally, uh, I use the 20 EMA as a stop loss, but I have to have confluence with the pivot breaking. So like, you know, on the 5 minute here, like I was talking about on the cues, right? 
Different example, 20 EMA is failing, but this pivot never fails. There's no reason for me to get out of this trade, right? So, you know, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, I hope that this session helps you guys. We will have more this weekend. Uh, Friday was the last day for the live uh, day trading, right? The live day trading will only be in the Discord the rest of the month. But uh, once a week, I will stream on Twitch. That is my kind of, you know, um, I still want to help those in the community understand how to take good trades and watch a, you know, skilled trader take on trades day by day. So um, remember, if this has helped you and if you would like to join the Discord, please check out the link that is posted in chat. Um, I will have much more content out this weekend preparing everyone, you know, not just for the next week, but on their trading journey in general. Um, for those of you in the Discord, right, I will have homework put out tomorrow morning. So please go through in the Discord and check out the homework channel. Um, this, right, last week, you know, what do you feel like your weaknesses are? I test not only your technical abilities, but your emotional or psychological standpoint when you are, uh, you know, as a trader, 90, 90 to 95% of trading is your mental game, right? Your psychological aspect and strength uh, in regards to your emotions, right? So I will post this tomorrow morning. I want you guys to be able to participate. We have a huge amount of participation each weekend. Uh, if you have the time, please go through and, you know, uh, and uh, participate, right? This truly helps you as a trader right you can chart and chart and chart but if you're not working on your psychological strength or your trading psychology you're not going to improve okay um as well as this weekend um the uh google drive file i will have to refresh right i haven't had time i've had family in town but it will refresh uh good work on the daily poll right 119 to 65 112 to 68 or 78 so we got that number a little bit lower good work on the record days guys um, but we're just continuing to push in day in day out and uh, great to see everyone making money or for the most part, right? Um, as well as, uh, you know, this weekend guys, I also want you guys to go through chart review and post at least one or two charts. Uh, I love to see, you know, I skimmed through these. I can't reply to every single one of them, but I love to see uh, you guys, you know, putting in the work, putting in annotations. And truly reviewing your trades uh, and seeing what you could have improved upon or, uh, you know, what you need to, you know, continue to do or look for when taking trades. So, uh, once again, I hope that this helps you guys. And uh, I thank you for your time. Um, I hope that everyone has a good weekend. Um, and I hope that everyone has the ability to get some rest and catch up on some sleep. Um, I will be doing so tomorrow. I probably won't wake up till like 11. So... Uh, I'll see everyone tomorrow for the live EDU session. It will be recorded, of course, and uh, you guys enjoy your weekend. Thanks for tuning in.